We try to behave ourselves on the story, but y'all know what we thinking right now. <laughs> I'm ready for the night. I got a little uh, extra energy. I don't know what might come out of my mouth tonight. As you can is, tell them to go sit their bad asses down so we're grown folks in here talking. <laughs> T-G-I-M. Hey everybody, it's your girl Claudia Jovan. It's Friday, y'all, and we are back with a brand new episode of TGIF. Now, of course, we're spilling the tea and breaking down the biggest headlines in the news and on social media. So sit back, relax, and get ready for this hot tea. Let me introduce my two fabulous co-hosts. Please welcome Al Reynolds and Funky Dineva. What's up, y'all? Hey, what's going on, Claudia? What'd you say? I said, what's going on, Miss Claudia? Um, out here in LA real quick and um uh just trying to make it happen remotely. And you know, y'all know how all the stuff that comes with making it happen on the road. So I'm just blessed and happy to be here and online with y'all. Okay. Very good. I uh you know, I'm I'm gonna be very honest with you. Today just isn't a good day for me. What's wrong? I mean, I woke up and the Roe v. Wade news just um it really messed me up today. I, I've been really jacked up all day today. Yeah, I, I definitely um, was depressed about it. Um, you know, I have a few friends and, uh, well, I will get more into this later on the show, but the, what they just did to women with no exceptions is it, just, it's, it's ridiculous. Yeah, there'll be some states that you'll be able to go and travel, but it leaves poor women in, in, in the doghouse. And I think that's by design. You, you got to go to another state. It's it just, it's unbelievable that we regulated the uterus before the guns. It, it's just weird because for me, it brought back, um, I've driven many a people to abortion clinic. I have loaned many a people money to get an abortion. I have hid many abortion secrets among close family members. And I just couldn't help but think about the trajectory of some of those people's lives today if some of those options weren't available. And some of those people now are currently lawyers and doctors and teachers and, and a whole bunch of other things. It's just, it's just been a very sad, solemn day for me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, mm. I wanna start crying this early in the show, but yeah, I, I, I totally am on the same page with you when it comes to this. It's, it's, it's unbelievable, actually. It's, it's unbelievable. Um, are y'all drinking tonight? You know I am, honey. I got a glass full of tequila with a splash of orange juice. <laughs> <laughs> Al, are you drinking? Yeah, I got a little whiskey here. I have to drink today. <laughs> I'm not drinking on the show, but I just left the Ivy with my girls. And uh, I, I had a few Moscatos there. And the TMZ bus pulled up and it was a whole big old spectacle. And we had a lot of fun. Um, but yeah, I got, I got a look at me from early. So I think we're going to be good. I think yeah. we're going to be good. All right, well, let's get into these topics. We have a lot to cover tonight. Of course, uh, as Funky mentioned, breaking news today, the Supreme Court has overturned Roe versus Wade, and states can now move forward with banning abortions. Now, shortly after the announcement was made earlier, Donald Trump Jr. went to Twitter to celebrate the court's decision. He tweeted, proud of my father for what he has accomplished today. He gave our movement three strong pro-life Supreme Court justices, and despite the Dems and their left-wing media doing everything they could to stop their confirmations, especially with Kavanaugh, he never wavered. Al, what are your thoughts on the story? I, 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 um, you know, I'm here in Washington, D.C. Um, it has been a crazy situation. Uh, the cops and roads are cut off on every corner. Um, to me, this is just sad. I, you know, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to defer to Funky on this one. Sorry. Just to me, everything about this is wrong. Everything about this is going to affect our community um, a little bit more than others. I believe I, er, everything about this is going to overload um, our foster care system for people that can't keep the kids. I mean, it, this, this is just sad. It's just super sad. I'm sorry. I got to pass this one. Um, what a lot of people are failing to realize about Roe v. Wade is that a lot of this came about because people got sick and tired of stepping over dead bodies in alleys or women showing up in hospitals dead because of back alley abortions. Um, you know, we now live in a world with Internet. My biggest fear is that people are going to be posting um, abortion cocktail recipes on the Internet for people to drink and get sick. Um, 
you know, Whoopi Goldberg said something so pro- profound on The View one day. And she said, if a woman doesn't want to have a baby, she's not going to have that baby. Um, you know, so many thoughts have gone through my mind. You know, a, a lot of people tend to think that abortions come about because people are just reckless and having sex. And while that is a part of it, I think back to all of my homegirls who needed to have abortions in high school, um, how now this situation will just leave the onus on all of these young girls because it's daddy's, I mean, mommy's baby, daddy's maybe. The guy gets to walk away scotch-free while the girl is stuck with this. It, it's, it's just, there's so many implications. And then the biggest fear, being a gay Black man, is that it's abortion today, it's gay rights tomorrow, and it's civil rights on Friday. So y'all, we got to be diligent and really pay attention to what the hell is going on. Clarence Thomas already made it clear that he wants to go after same-sex marriages and contraception mm-hmm. and all kinds of things. Uh, I'm going to share something with y'all. This story definitely has, uh, uh, you know, it, it hits me in the gut. When I was 18, I was raped. And um, I was a beginner in, as an adult. It was actually the day after I graduated high school. I was so excited to leave and go to college. And it just kind of ruined my life, I thought. And about five weeks later, I found I was pregnant. And I wanted that thing out of me. It was, did not feel like a blessing. Like some of these Republicans say, oh, enjoy it. It's a blessing from God. It's not a blessing. It's a reminder. And um, I remember having to like sell my jewelry and um, I had like little study earrings I had and try to get the money to get an abortion. Um, I had to walk past protesters showing me pictures of dissected babies to try to make it seem like demonic. But to me, what was demonic was me being held down by a grown ass man who took something so special to me. And to sit here and see these men pass these legislations, uh, these these laws where it's like, we're going to tell you what's best for you. I would not have had the life I have now. And I don't know what kind of life that child would have had. I didn't look at it as a baby. I looked at it as um, it was a reminder of that night. And I went by myself. It was a lot of comp- a lot of things happened with that. I got sick after. It was horrible, but it saved me from what could have been the, the alternative. And later on, I found out this guy raped four of my other friends that will all keep me quiet, all ashamed. And this has major repercussions, y'all. I'm sharing this with y'all because um, I think we should talk about this. I think it's it's been so taboo, but. And abortion shouldn't just be for rape, but that is a major concern. I'm sick of people diminishing, oh, that's just one in a thousand or one in a million of the case. No, it's very common. Almost all of my friends have been victims of sexual abuse from family members or someone they knew. Mm-hmm. And it's none of your goddamn business if I got pregnant because I was reckless or if someone held me down and took it. So why mess with this option that can save the mother's life? Why do we care so much about, we, we, why do we care so little about the, the mother, the woman? I'm sorry, let me not call them. Why do we care so less about the, the, the woman that gets something taken away from her? Why do we just treat women like they're just property of the government, of the state? And that's what it's becoming. And it's scary times. It really, really is. And I'm so pissed off and I'm trying not to cuss, but this is devastating. You know, and what's even more bothersome is all right, you're taking abortion off the table, then why are you now planning to come for contraception? Like, I mean, are you taking us back to Oregon Trail days? Like, what in the entire hell is going on here? What are they getting out of this? I saw someone on Young Turks today, and this woman went off. She said, I'm not a Christian. I don't believe in Christianity and I have the right, just like you have the right now fight for your religious freedom and your choices. So why should my, why should my body, my, the rules for me through the government be based on your Christianity that I don't believe in? I, I agree. And it's and, not an attack on anybody's religion. Believe what you want, but you cannot have one religion, regardless of what you feel, govern the whole world. And we got a lot of soulmates, but the Bible says, but the Bible, and I get all of that. But everybody's life cannot be governed by the Bible, your religion. You have the right to have your religion. You have to let people have the other right to have theirs as well. We have some comments. Cynthia Alexander says, how about thinking about the outcome before you just sleep around? What's wrong with prevention? Lady, stop. Grow up. And that's the thing. That's the misconception that everybody is just sleeping around. Things happen. Condoms break. Or we're married. We already got four damn kids and can't afford a fifth one. You know what I'm saying? 
uh, uh, chromosomal issues, incest, rape. There are a lot of circumstances by which people need to have an abortion and we need to stop this narrative that it's just people being promiscuous and that's the only reason why they want to have an abortion. And even if they were, it's their business. Pixie Princess got all these religious folks deciding how we all live in this country that's supposed to be ruled by the people. Kim White says, Claudia, I'm sending you love, hope and support and prayers. And Keisha McRae says a woman should have the right to choose. End of story. I'm just it's just so unbalanced. You know, there's no legislation for the male reproduction, reproductive system. None, none, not one, not a one. Ladies, you have the power. You're married to these men that make these rules. Are you allowing this in your household? You have daughters. I bet you damn, uh, I bet you anything. Let one of these Republicans that were, were down for this, let their daughter get pregnant by a black and brown person. We'll see how fast they find an abortion for that girl. It's just disgusting. You know, All right, you move- know- it just sucks now. Just one last thing I want to say before we put a button on it. I hate that the onus ultimately falls on women. But at this point, parents out there, you got to get your daughters on the shot. The Mirena, the IUD, the, the, the birth control while we can still get it, especially if you are in one of those 24 states where they flat out said they're trigger states that they're banning it completely. I know a lot of parents are not advocates of sex. But I, I, your kids are going to sneak and have it anyway. I think you'd rather them not end up pregnant than end up pregnant. I just don't get how a father who has teenage daughters that's in that that was part of this pushing for this could say even in cases of rape or incest. That is a demonic way of thinking. No outs for any of that. The life of the mother in jeopardy. Topic pregnancies. This is a true war on women. If you don't see it, you're blind. Next, we won't be able to vote, ladies and gentlemen. We won't. If you think it can't happen, I never thought something that's in the Constitution can get taken out. They give them rights and then taking them back. They all got, they all got collective hard-ons right now that they got this through. And they got in the black, the black justice, and don't not internal, if don't you want to even call them. He gunning for the next round already. Mm-hmm. The one that needs to be impeached. All right, y'all. Quick commercial break and we'll come back. Y'all got to take this stuff seriously, y'all. With some happy news. Hopefully we come back with some happy news. We'll be right back. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, let's uh, let's pick this show up a little bit. We uh, get all the sad stuff out of the way and now let's have a little bit of fun with this show. All right, now uh, during her Pride performance in New York City, Madonna... Brought Saucy Santana on stage to perform a mashup of both of their material girl hits. What do y'all think about this? Al, you, you this was in our chat earlier. What do you think about this? Oh, I mean, I thought that's pretty huge. I mean, I I I think any um black male gay rapper that has the uh the opportunity to share the stage with the icon Madonna, I mean, it's really showing how far we've come actually in the music industry um, with, you know, incorporating black gay rappers. Um, I mean, I, I know Saucy Santana has got to be feeling really good about this. All right, Q, what are your thoughts? So oh, it's weird because I'd made a, a post when I saw it on the Neighborhood Talk page and they actually pinned it at the very top. And my comment read, go off Santana. The machine is officially behind him. He has arrived. And Santana responded, this was not a machine. This was Madonna's choice. No machine could make this possible. Madonna is a legend and seeing from the past weeks of rehearsal, she caused the shots. I am God's child and I was chosen, but thank you. Um, You know, that was Saucy's response to me saying, basically it ain't the machine, it was Madonna, um, which you know, at the point in which Madonna is coming and, and getting you, Santana, you still got the machine behind you, brother. But Santana and I have a great online relationship. And I love the fact that he is getting um, the recognition and the backing that a lot of LGBTQIA plus artists don't get. And that's what I meant by the machine is behind him. You're now getting that real Hollywood backing that a lot of up and coming artists, including some of your other people who've been on Love and Hip Hop 
have not even gotten. So shouts out to Saucy Santana and shouts out to Madonna for recognizing his talent and doing this mashup. I have two points. One, since calm down, like I think you're getting very defensive. I know you had a bad couple of weeks of people commenting on your the things that you've been doing, but Funky didn't mean that in a bad way. And the machine is a good thing to have. Who wouldn't want the machine behind them? It's not a bad thing. It's not a slight. It's not a diss. So maybe you should stop being so defensive. People are proud of you and you are breaking ba- ba- uh, barriers. You really are. And the fact that Madonna, I think it was brilliant to do a song Material Girl because she had act- actually kind of like no choice but to notice you. Mm-hmm. I think that was a great idea. You know what I mean? And you do a remake or a, a song uh, inspired by such a, a huge iconic artist like Madonna, of course, you're going to catch the attention of her. And I think it was a great idea. So I'm going to give you your props on this. I'm going to give you your props when you do something good. But like, you know, relax a little bit. And you know what, Claudia, I'm going to take it a step further. Quiet as it's kept, he actually gave Madonna more relevancy in 2022 than she had on her own. Because the last thing we saw was that horrible ass job that she had done with her butt cheeks looking like two Spalding basketballs. If, if, If you ask me who was using who and who benefited the most from this. Yeah. Madonna, ben- you know, M- Madonna benefited the most. It was a great look for Santana and his career, but Madonna, from a relevancy perspective, she definitely benefited the most. Um, yeah, it looked to um, me. Well, that's one thing about it that I will have to say, even though we have to take what we get, right? We have to take the opportunities that we get, but it did kind of feel kind of culture vulturous in, in the sense that she put him on the stage with her in this remix. You think she's a culture vulture when he was copying her song no she adding him to add yeah adding him to her to her lineup i think so that's how i think it made her it made her relevant in 2022 Mm -hmm. madonna madonna is an icon for people who are about uh 47 and older right now um if you ask anybody who is 23 years old right now who madonna is and what she's seeing they have questions (laughs) they'd have the slightest idea of Madonna's true relevancy to the pop game. So put it this way, it was a win-win for everybody. Yeah, I, I can't go with y'all on, on, on Santana giving Madonna 80 million, what is she, 80, 100, 300 million record, whatever she has relevancy. All she got to do is get a, show her butt and she's going to be all over the social media. Cause that- I mean, but you can't, but, but half her fan base got one leg in the grave and the rest of them <laughs> in the grave. So <laughs> I'm just saying. All right. She's so crazy. Uh, being the graves and people killing their career, which I'm so sad about this story because I'm such I was such a fan of his. Andrew Gillum, the former 2018 Democratic nominee for governor of Florida, has been indicted on 21 federal charges, including conspiracy and wire fraud for funneling donations through third parties and back to himself for personal use. Gillum is also charged with making false statements to the FBI and claiming that he did not receive or ask for anything from two undercover agents posing as developers. The undercover agents offered gifts and money in exchange for support for projects. Gillum denied the charges in a statement released through his lawyers. He said, make no mistake that this case is not legal, it's political. Throughout my career, I've always stood up for the people of Florida and have spoken truth to power. There's been a target on my back ever since I was mayor of Tallahassee. They found nothing then, and I have full confidence that my legal team will prove my innocence now. Q, you went to school with him. What are your thoughts on this news? You know, this hurts me because I was at Florida State when Andrew Gillum was student body president at FAMU. I actually worked on his very first political campaign. And I remember the slogan, vote Andrew Gillum, city commission. We were going door to door, knocking on people's doors, passing out flyers to get this man elected. A lot of people don't believe I know Matt Gates. I was, I hate to say this, I was actually very good friends with Matt Gates. We were in student government together. And it's just weird to see these people who I matriculated with go through these things that they're going through. Now, listen, the, the Republicans, whomever, they did the best Olivia Pope hit job they could ever do on Andrew Gillum. I thought that they were done with him with the whole male escort and the drugs and the and the and the whatever, whatever that would have left him in a position where he couldn't do any more gubernatorial work and would probably have to go into the private sector. Now they are making sure that they bury this man six feet under, and I hate it. I will say this: 
whoever's responsible for doing it, they are doing a very good damn job. Whoever paid them, they're getting their money's worth. But I definitely hate that this is happening to Andrew Gillum. And I question the validity of much of it. Okay. You don't think it's all the way true? No, I, I definitely think it's a hit job. It's the, the same way um, that that stuff with that pros that male prostitute um, was, was halfway true. Mm -hmm. He said it was halfway. Well, I, they, it, it was it was halfway true. I mean, they they I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, it was halfway true. They 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 overcorrected the minute they put their arm cuff in there, and 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 I'm putting my business on the line. I am somebody who has casually done party drugs. Okay, I know the party drugs that black people do, and the ones that they don't do. It took my white friends to explain to me what that arm cuff was for, and that was for you to cuff your arm up and shoot meth or heroin up your arm. That ain't some mess black people do. Okay, they, they, we, we just don't do that. So, it's so it, sad because he was such a rising star. There was talks about him being presidential. Uh, yeah. Al, what do you think about this? You know, this smells and looks like a public opinion lynching. And I'm, this is what I'm going to do with it, Q. We're not going to say that they're putting a nail in his coffin. If we can support a president who was uh, 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 accused, accused of rape, if we if we have had a president that was accused of rape, if we had a president that has also committed wire fraud and tax fraud, if we can have a president that that incites an insurrection and and this this belief that black people are less than in America, then we can have another governor of Florida or another politician in this space like Andrew Gilliam. Listen, this is heartbreaking because we were all rooting for him, right? And they thought they had him. They really thought they had him when they did what I do believe and agree with Q is they staged this setup and got him. But what he did was he held his head up, he went on national television and he came out as a bisexual man with his wife and she supported him and they're still together. And he started to get momentum to come back and they didn't like it. And I think that's why we're now hearing about a story where a governor, he was the mayor of Tallahassee, is being set up by the FBI, everybody, by the FBI, by undercover agents posing to be developers to try to catch him in a lie. Where else in America does a black politician have to put up with this type of crap? It's unfair, and I will say this. I don't care if he is not done with politics. If he comes back with his held, head held up high, I will volunteer on his campaign trail. Now, if you're committing crimes, you're committing crimes. And I'm a huge Andrew Gillum fan. But let's just keep the same energy for our white counterparts. Because Donald Trump and his entire family have been accused of all the same kind of stuff and more. Talk about gaining, uh, using their politics and their parties and misuse of campaign funding. That is something that runs very, very, very deep in that family. He raised over $250 million on this you know, fight the stop the, the steal and all this other nonsense. And we talk about it for a couple of days, it goes away. Andrew Gillum, it's like this man committed murder. So if he's guilty, he's guilty. But miss me with the picking and choosing, the cherry picking of who it's so devastating if they did it and who and it's not. And I do believe they're putting 10 on 20 when it comes to Andrew. He was he was fantastic and brilliant and had a huge political future. And, and the charisma that we are lacking in the Democratic Party is what he had. And it feels like entrapment, all right? Like, I, I want to know who, who sat in the FBI boardroom and said, let's launch investigation ABC entrap Andrew Gillum. We got hundreds of thousands of missing Black girls, and this is how y'all use FBI resources for to pose somebody as, as developers to try to catch this man up in something, it just seems baseless. Wait a minute. It's in the state of Florida. And he was the mayor of Tallahassee. He wasn't the governor. He was the mayor of Tallahassee. How do you even get that assignment? How do you even get that assignment as an FBI agent to cover this type of stuff? Does it have anything to do with the fact that the president's favorite state to vacation in or the ex-president's favorite state to vacation in was the state of Florida and uh, a black male was getting ready to take over the reins there? This is fishy and I don't like it. And he didn't lose by a lot either. Not at all. Oh, and now they're talking about this fool running for president, DeSantis. Funky. Get the hose on him. Do something. 
I, I need Please. to find something. I, I, listen, Please. um, gay Miami people, Miami <laughs> people. Listen, I'm going to the gay club tonight. I'm, matter of fact, I'm gonna go down to the twist on South Beach. I need to talk to all the gay boys in DeSantis age group because I know y'all got some tea on him. I Please. can smell on TGIF. We need something, anything. If if he even looked at you twice or slipped you his phone number, I need the scoop. And you will be our fourth host on the show. On the show, okay? okay? Something. We got you. Oh, moving on. Caesar Emanuel from VH1's Black Ink crew has been fired from the show after a video surface of him abusing a dog. Now, in the video, Caesar is seen kicking the dog before beating it multiple times with the chair. Caesar's co-star Donna Lombardi reposted the clip on social media with the caption, if you can treat a dog like this, it shows how sick of a person you truly are. I don't even get into the life of this man, but this video made me so upset. Now, shortly after the video went viral, VH1 posted the following on the Instagram page. We have made the decision to cut ties with Caesar Emanuel from Black and Crew, New York. Since next season was close to finishing production, the decision will not impact the upcoming season. Caesar's lawyer confirmed that it is indeed him in the video and claims the video is old from 2021 and was shot at his home in Atlanta during the pandemic. Caesar posted the following apology Take a look at this clip provided by TMZ. I'm not going to make no excuses for myself. I should have behaved better, but that's not me with being cruel to animals or anything like that. I'm, I'm not that. I'm not that, yo. What do y'all think about this story and Caesar getting fired from his own show? Q, you want to go first? So I haven't followed Black Ink Crew in a while. I'm curious to know if Donna is still a character on the show, because if she is, she just messed up her own bag right that's number one caesar is the show i don't know i mean maybe they'll find a creative way to make the show be able to go on with or without caesar definitely what caesar did to those animals are deplorable you know hitting the animals with the chair hitting them with the dog um you know it's just very fishy though because vh1 y'all got people on y'all network that have done far worse who are convicted felons who are a whole lot of other things. And maybe perhaps because those things aren't on video right now and haven't gone viral, y'all choose to just ride along with that. But um, I, 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 uh, I, I, don't, I, I don't know that I feel like he should have gotten fired after nine years of a successful franchise. Okay. Al, what are your thoughts? I'm going to have to disagree with Funky on this one. Um, do you guys remember, what was it, 2021, his daughter? His 16-year-old daughter said that he pulled her out of the shower, he kicked her, punched her, and stomped on her like she was a dog in the streets. When I saw him hit taking that chair and hitting that dog with the way he did, reminded me of that story. And it made me think, oh my gosh, now I believe the daughter and the, the mother of the daughter, his baby mama came for y'all remember that campaign, they had a huge campaign on all the blogs. So let me tell you what's so frustrating for me to witness. Okay, so it's okay VH1 for him to beat his 16 year old daughter slap her stomp her, whatever the mother, the, the baby mama and the daughter allege. However, he doesn't get in trouble for that. The show goes on. But the second he takes a chair and hits a dog, he loses his entire nine seasons. Something about that I just don't feel comfortable with. And I, I mean, I know that 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 it it it's not apples to apples, but to me, I feel like he should have gotten in more trouble. Oh, and he put her out. Remember, he put her out the house and she was homeless. She was homeless on the streets of New York City without any money. And the mother, the baby mother, had to fly overnight to go get her daughter. Something about that would have made me want to serve her ties with him before him taking a chair and hitting a dog. They're saying in the chat that she's been off the show. They were together. They broke up. And that video was from a ring camera in his house. And she got the video and, and held it over his head like if, uh, you know, I'll, I'll ruin your whole life if I release this. And then she got mad enough to do that, allegedly. Um, are we surprised? Are we, we, we've seen time and time again, police officers, neighborhood watch people, George Zimmerman, all kinds of white folks, um, you know, killing us with very little penalty. But don't you mess with those dogs. 
Do not mess with those dogs. You mess with an animal. Not saying it's right because it's not right. It's not, I'm not defending it because I'm not, I'm not going to be one of those people that's like, because he's black, I'm going to defend everything he does because it's not right. It's not. But again, I'm all about fairness. Keep the same energy for things that are of equal, uh, I don't know, level of horrificness. That's not even a word, but you know what I'm saying? Mm. It's just the picking and choosing is what pisses me off. I yeah. think that's what we have what we have a problem with. So yeah. drag your daughter out of the shower, kick her, and have in and, and have that. Don't do it again if you can, please. Uh hit a dog. It's a wrap, and we're gonna cancel everything. Just like when um Ben Roethlisberger, the quarterback from, from you know the Pittsburgh Steelers, the beloved white quarterback, had multiple rape accusations. They swept that on the rug. And then Michael Vick got caught up in that, you know, the dog fighting scandal, and they wanted him lynched. Mm-hmm. I'm not surprised. All right, y'all. Another great conversation. We're going to take a quick commercial break. We'll be back with more TGIF after this. Hey, guys. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, y'all. I know we talk about credit, and um, sometimes we touch upon it. And I think people make a lot of jokes about credit, but it's something that you shouldn't really be joking about. It's something you should take very seriously. And I wish I would have protected my credit when I was in college, getting those Macy's credit cards that they give you with no job and ruined my credit. And it took forever to get it together. But listen, you can fix it, though. It's not the end of the world. Um, I want to ask you, how important is your credit score to you? There's a whole three-week rule out there that may be the best financial advice. I need you to follow. Now, what is a three-week rule? You know, you should wait three weeks to buy a new car, wait three weeks to refinance your home mortgage, and wait three weeks to finance any major purchase. Now, why three weeks? Well, that's because that's the average time of the average score master user takes to boost his or her credit score up to 61 points. Now, listen, 61 points added to your credit score, that's major. That can save you thousands of dollars on everything you finance. Scoremaster technology was definitely developed by a credit data scientist to boost your credit score higher and faster than you ever thought possible. Now, Scoremaster is so easy, takes about a minute to get started, and you don't have to wait months for your best credit score. Try Scoremaster today and see how many plus points you can add to your credit score. Go to scoremaster.com slash T, that's scoremaster.com slash T, once again, that's scoremaster.com slash T. And let me tell you something. I have been a customer of Scoremaster, a client, since we started. And I get these alerts that keep me on top of everything. So I have not been late on anything. And my credit was in the, mm, it was in, somewhere in the 600s. And now I'm in the upper 700s. So this is real, y'all. So please, once again, scoremaster.com slash T. Get your credit life together. All right, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back, we'll be back with more TGIF after this. Welcome back to TGIF. Shout out to all the soulmates in the chat. If you're feeling the show, give us some thumbs up, some flames, some rainbows. Just give us something. All right, y'all. It looks like Kyle Rittenhouse has a new business venture. Rittenhouse revealed his plans to release a video game where players can shoot fake news turkeys to gain points. Proceeds from his game will reportedly go towards his defamation lawsuits against the media for calling him a murderer because, you know, he's not. Uh, What do you think about this new business venture for Rittenhouse, Al? You ain't gonna talk to her like only in America. <laughs> That's all I got to say. Only in America, okay? Only in America can you kill two people, cross state lines at 17 years old, state lines driven by your mother. Your mother drove you with guns that you carry out in the open. Um, have a national trial, kill two people, have a national trial, meet with the president of the United States, and then become an American hero. And then after you've done all of that, you then monetize it by making a freaking game. That's $10, everyone. This game is $10. So it's very likely that this, what I consider a domestic terrorist and a white supremacist, will soon have a company worth a million dollars. Only in America, everybody. Can you believe, by contrast, and I have to, of course, I'm always about fairness. Can, can you imagine... If OJ Simpson tried to sell knives, can you imagine? He, I mean, he got out, he, he was found not guilty of murder, but we all know the deal, right? Can you imagine if he tried to sell gloves, make a mockery of, of, of getting off? Q, what do you think? Um, it's antagonistic. Mm-hmm. Um, it hurts, but this is one of those things where I've made the conscious decision a long time ago him, the George Zimmermans, the David Chauvin's, I'm just not going to let them steal my joy. 
Um, those that buy this video game, there's a special place in hell for people like you. And I just have to believe Claudia and Al that uh, when it's all said and done, God is going to handle it. He sees all things and um, they're going to get theirs. They may not get it in this lifetime. They may not get it in front of our face, but uh, they're definitely going to get theirs. I can't. Why do we get ours though so much sooner? That's what just really pisses me off. Because if that was a person of color, not, you know, any person of color, brown, Hispanic, black, he would be underneath the jail. And not only would he be underneath the jail, there would be petitions against his patents on the making of that game, on the coding of that game. I promise you there would be lawyers fighting to have it blocked. But no, 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 no. Not this white supremacist American hero. He's going to be a millionaire by the age of 20. And he killed people in, in, in a in a in a what was it a black lives matter uh, march this is sick now you know what's funny about it and i'm not even trying to be funny <laughs> while patrice them got them black last people matter money buying up all them damn houses this is the type of stuff she need to be spending the money on the fight patrice mm -hmm. people patrice people <laughs> where is them i mean like hell did this and i'm not trying to call black lives matter in scrutiny or or rain on my own people but this is a prime example of something that patrice them could be doing with the black lives matter money getting this blocked i'm just saying i want to say sorry to the families that lost the, the, the that lost their two loved ones in this that you have to now see the murderer of your of your sons make a video game kind of poking fun at the whole situation and then profit from it that's yeah. that that's that's just yeah Ooh, and I'm you, know, to you know who else I'm curious mm -hmm. to hear from, and I don't know why. I'm just curious to hear what that what Candace Owens has to say about it, and I, I don't know why. I, I just am, because I know it's going to be something outrageous in support of it, and this is insane. Mm. All right, some good news. I never thought we'd see the day, but Boosie is trending in the media for doing something positive. We're gonna turn this show around. Take a look. You ain't gonna talk to her like that. I would beat your ass. You talk to it's me okay. like that. It's okay. You're not gonna disrespect no woman like that, bro. Come on. She trying. She telling you. She, everybody's saying they're sorry. As you can see, Boosie jumped to the defense of a female hotel employee who was being disrespected by a man. What are your thoughts on Boosie defending this woman, Al? <laughs> Shout out for Boosie for this. In fact, Claudia, this lets me know that Boosie's probably looking at TGIF on Wednesday and Friday. He listened to your advice where you said you wanted to see more black men take up for black women in these situations. And the best thing about this that I love, I, I, it really just won my heart, was the guy that was with Boosie. If, the, if production still has that uh, clip, if he can put it back up, I don't know if, if they're going to show the whole thing. But the guy that was with Boosie walked behind the black woman to protect her when the when the guy was in her face and he started to stretch his shoulder and flex his hand and fist as if anything went left he was definitely going to take that man out thumbs up Bootsy, for this thumbs up for the gentleman in the back thumbs up to both of you for having the black woman's back it was really refreshing to see all right q what are your thoughts yeah i know i don't mess with Bootsy, but i love when you use your ghetto superpowers for good okay <laughs> Bootsy was, was about to turn that man every which way set loose I'm here for it. I think this may be the first time in TGIF history that I have ever rooted for Boosie and said, go Boosie. Boosie, I'm here to let you know it ain't all hate on my end. And brother, I will always stand with you when you're right. And you were right in this situation. And, and hats off to you, Black man. People in the chat are saying it was a white woman. Is that true? No, it wasn't a white woman. It was a black woman. But the, in the video, there was uh, two women and one of one of the women were, who was trying to defuse it was um, a white woman or she looked non-black. I'm going to say this. The fact that you're defending women, period, it doesn't have to just be black women. But we do know that black women are the most disrespected and the least protected. So I'm going to go ahead and give you your props. You can say wrong things and we can sit here and criticize you, but we would not be anything worth a damn. And we didn't in turn also give you your props, like Funky said, when you are right. So Boosie, we salute you for this, uh, you know, right here. Keep, keep, keep this up. I like this, Boosie. 
And we like, we actually do like reporting good stories about you. We do. Mm-hmm. All right. We're going to take a quick commercial break and we'll be back with more TGIF after this. Welcome back to TGIF. All right, y'all. I'm sure y'all saw this on the internet because I was sending this video clip to all my friends. Herschel Walker having a tough time remembering how many states America has. Now, during a recent interview, Walker said there were 52 states rather than 50. And Walker has gone after Stacey Abrams for recently saying, I'm tired of hearing about Georgia being uh, the best state in the country to do business when we are the worst state in the country to live. You know, he had smoke for her. Uh, Walker responded, if you don't believe in the country, leave and go somewhere else. If it's the worst state, why are you here? Why don't you leave? Go to another. There's what, 51 more states you can go to? What are your thoughts on the story? Q, let's start with you. CTE is real. CTE is real. And here's the sad part about it. Herschel Walker wouldn't pass the background check to be a substitute teacher with 30 college credits from a community college. But just because he say anything anti-Black and use anti-Black rhetoric, them crazy conservative white folks will get behind him because he is an athlete and unbeknownst to them, Black folks do not get behind no Herschel Walker. Y'all would have a better chance running Candace Owens for the win than you would illiterate Herschel Walker. And not just Herschel Walker, his whole illiterate, crazy, ridiculous family um, and I'd just be curious to know what are the two additional states that they didn't teach me about when I went down to Myrtle Grove Elementary from the first through the fifth grade. I, I'd just be curious. To well, know. I think the other two states are the other two states where his other two children were that he didn't claim, but yet he had so much smoke for other people and talked about how black fathers and kids and there's just all these issues going on. And look at you, Herschel Walker. That's probably where they at, Claudia. That's where they at. I really think that we should really examine this for really what it is. I think it's a little bit more than this, guys. Let me tell you what's going on here. He is a part of one of the most high profile Senate races in the country right now. And what has happened is because he lied about being a part of law enforcement, because he all these illegitimate kids are popping up, because he made that horrible comment about the mass shooting in freaking Texas, the Republicans are now saying this Negro, this person is a liability to our, uh, our, our our Republican Party. So what did they do? They went out and set him up. I ultimately feel like the Republicans shaped this story because he only had a slip of the tongue. It wasn't it wasn't that bad of what he said. We know Obama had a slip of the tongue too, saying that there were 57 press states. But this, I feel, was planted by the Republicans because they're trying to find their way to kick his you know what, out of the house. And this is what I say to you, Herschel, you getting everything that you deserve. You thought they liked you, right? You thought that they had your back, right? Look how they are now setting this campaign that move you along because you are causing them a chance of the Senate. See you later, Herschel. And did you see when he talked about, you know, he's known to have multiple personalities. So what has also been accused of, uh, of, of uh, domestic violence against his ex-wife, he said, what's wrong? He basically, basically to paraphrase, uh, Jesus had it too. He said he was a father, the son, and the Holy Ghost. So he was basically equating that literally and saying Jesus too, like they share the multiple personality disorder. So it's all good. <laughs> later, later. Next. Some people should just stick to what they do, and that's play football. Like he should follow in the steps of Deion Sanders and go teach at an H. Don't you know what? Don't even go teach at an HBC. You will mess them kids up. Just go sit down somewhere. How about that? He, yeah, and, and that's a good idea. And enjoy your money. Go like go go play with OJ Simpson and Mike Tyson. Y'all start a poker league like that in in Evander Holyfield. That would be fun. Let Carlos King come in and film it. We could call it. Game, you know, game of clowns, and it, 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 it skyrocketed to the top. I will be making donations for Raphael Warnock to be reelected, who is actually a really good senator down in Georgia. So uh, this Herschel Walker thing is a slap in the face if they think they can parade this Ill- ignorant, uh, illiterate black man athlete that we're supposed to be like, ooh, that's Herschel Walker. He can run. I'm going to vote for him. I think the F not. We're not them. All right, y'all. The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills alumna Denise Richards uh, launched an OnlyFans account. She announced her new account through a post on her Instagram story yesterday. Richards OnlyFans launch comes after she defended her 18-year-old daughter 
Sammy Sheen, who uh, launched her OnlyFans page earlier this month. Denise Richards posted a statement on Instagram. Lots of negative comments on my social this past week. I have to say, I wish I had the confidence of my 18-year-old daughter. And also, I can't be judgmental of her choices. I did wild things and Playboy. And quite frankly, her father shouldn't be judgmental either. What are your thoughts on Denise Richards launching her OnlyFans account? And Al, will you be subscribing? <laughs> uh, absolutely not. She doesn't have anything that I want to see. Uh, um, not in the blondes, skinny ones. All right. No, there's something about this that just makes me uncomfortable, to be honest. And it's not that she has an OnlyFans um, account. It's that she's following behind her. I thought her daughter was 17. Maybe she's 18 now. I thought uh, she's following behind her daughter's um, idea of starting an OnlyFans uh, account. And you know what's so funny? You know her and Charlie Sheen had this child together, right? And Charlie Sheen's kind of twisted background and all that sex and all the different women and all the drugs and the daughter doing the only fans and now denise doing her only fans who this just feels creepy to me seems weird and creepy i don't like it okay q yeah erica badu said work ain't honest but it pays the bills all right um you know these celebrities have taught me not to jump off a bridge when i hear their name in conjunction with only fans because Evelyn Lozada's got one and it's got her feet out. It's hard for me to believe Denise Richards is on the OnlyFans getting hunched, playing, you know, touching herself inappropriately. At best, she's probably giving us scantily clad videos. Um, I doubt, I doubt highly she's going to completely send her career to hell by becoming a porn star. And to be quite frankly, if you want to see Denise Richards in, in her full glory all you have to do is google the episode with her and nev campbell from wild things and everything that you want to see is there so right in the pool i think right the pool scene mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right uh on a positive note a burger king employee re revealed gifts he received from the company after working for them for 27 years without missing a day of work take a look a movie ticket thank you very much and i also got a bag of Reese's. This is very nice. Al, Q, what do you think? He's so hey. humble and grateful too. <laughs> hey, uh, this is in the state of Florida. Uh, Burger King is headquartered in the state of Florida in Miami, Miami. actually, Q. Miami. Uh, Burger King, Burger King, listen to me. You need to make this right. You need to make this right, because when we look at your demographic of the communities that you're located in and the customers that you serve, we as African-Americans make up a large number of this. And I think maybe Burger King, because if y'all uh, looked at the comments, Rick Ross actually commented under this post. And he's trying to find this employee because he's got a little present for him. I think Rick Ross needs to take this an extra step. Rick Ross is in Miami. Burger King's in Miami. The two of them need to meet and they need to do something positive for the community and for all the other employees that have given 20 or 30 years, not missed a day. And all you're going to give them are pens and markers and candy and a clear bag. Shame on you, Burger King. Shame on you. I'm happy to report, I've been tweeting about this and I think a lot of people have been really pushing the story out there. And I first looked at it, it was at $1,200. There's a GoFundMe page I was started. I just checked just now. He is at 74,621, uh, 27 year Kev. Kevin, 27 years is the GoFundMe. I think it's beautiful how the people did what Burger King should have done. Q, what do you think about this? I mean, I'm definitely not going to sit here and say Burger King should have given him 70 something thousand dollars for 27 years worth of service. Mm -hmm. Burger King did not make him work there for 27 years and they did compensate him whatever his rate was for 27 years. But you damn sure should have got more than a goodie bag that a three year old gets at a Chuck E. Cheese party for 27 years worth of service. What Rick Ross needs to do. Rick, I don't know what part of Florida that this gentleman lives in, but Rick Ross owns a couple checkers and wing stops down here i would like to not only see this man get his money but i would like to see rick ross 
high steal his ass from Burger King and give him a old fifty dollar an hour salary mm-hmm. just because he is a loyal and faithful employee. Can you imagine twenty seven years of having to deal with people attitude and dip them fries in that hot ass grease and turn them plastic burgers over on them? rusty buns and them and them brown bags and then now it's gay pride and now the man got to put two top buns on the top <laughs> on the top <laughs> burger bottom. two bottom buns on the bottom if you want a bottom burger the shake machine don't never damn work the mop water be smelling like ass and canal <laughs> and the man had to put up with all of this burger king y'all ought to be ashamed of y'all damn self. At a minimum, y'all could have made the man a franchisee. He got to know how to run the place from the inside out. He'd been there 27 years. So it. just to be clear, he's in Texas. The headquarters of Burger King is in Florida. Right. And the uh, David Spade, shout out to him. He gave $5,000. I just saw another donation for 5,200 of the people. I'm moved by this guy. Yes, Burger King doesn't own $70,000 or anything like that, but just give him something respectable. And the man that filmed the clip had been there for 20 years as well recognize good employees and reward them with something for an adult. All right, I want to thank my co-hosts, Al Reynolds and Funky Dineva for joining me tonight. Thank you for watching us on YouTube. Stay tuned for The House. That's coming up next. I hope y'all have a good weekend. Y'all got any big plans this weekend? I am on my way to he- uh, to host a comedy show for the Impulse Group, HIV AIDS Advocacy Group. And beyond that, I'm going to chill and get drunk. Right. No plans here. All right. All right. I'll see y'all back on Wednesday. Y'all have a great weekend. Bye. Same.